Hello, welcome everyone. Um, we will wait like one more minute uh, for more attendees to join the webinar and we will uh, start the session. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nofal Tamimi, one of the team members at Dubai uh, Startup Hub team. Uh, with me today, my colleagues, Nat Natalia Sacheva, Manager of Entrepreneurship, and Khawla Suwedi, Project Manager of Entrepreneurship, aside with Maryam Al Mihiri, Kimberly, and Faisal. On behalf of Dubai Startup Hub team and Dubai Chamber team and our partners from Virtual Zone, I would like to welcome you all to the networking series events. A session dedicated to, to healthcare. Uh, before we start, let's get to know each other by answering the quick poll, which has popped, in your, popped up in your screen. We will leave it open for three seconds and just to, to, to know who's with us today. In the meantime, I would like to remind you that you can answer that you can ask your question during the session to both our panel and Dubai Startup Hub team by typing in the Q&A box anytime, and we will be address addressing them in the Q&A part. So, without any further ado, let's start our session. Switching to you, Khawla. Thank you, Noth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the session. Uh, before I start, let's see who we have with us in the audience today. So the poll results showing me that we have eight entrepreneur and one employee. So uh, welcome all, and I hope this uh, session will be of benefit to you. Before we start, allow me to briefly um, uh, introduce ourselves, Dubai Startup Hub. Uh, Dubai Startup Hub is the entrepreneurship arm of Dubai Chamber. Our mission is to provide clarity and guidance to entrepreneurs' journey in Dubai. We work with the startups not only in the UAE but also overseas by providing the, them with uh, services via a set of dedicated programs. So uh, two weeks ago, we have launched our fifth edition of the networking series. So what's the difference this year and what's the objective with this initiative? Next slide, please. Uh, obviously, this year we will have it like a virtual series. Uh, we're still aiming to have or to create and networking opportunities uh, for the attendees. Uh, th this is why I want you to please express your interest and uh, who you would like to be contact uh, from the audience, and we will provide you with the contact details later uh, or tomorrow. The most important thing as well this year, the difference is this networking series is uh, bringing to you together with our partner, Virtual Zoom. We strongly believe that this partnership will allow us to bring more value to you. And for the first time, uh, 
we will be uh, releasing eight particular guides on how to start a startup business in Dubai and respective sectors. The last objective uh, of this webinar is, um, if we go back, uh, I'm Maryam, to the slides, the last objective will be uh, to share a knowledge and bring in spotlight experiences by amazing founders shaping their respective industry. Saying that, we have today with us our uh, startups, uh, two representatives of two healthcare startup companies, Khawla Hamad, founder and CEO of Tekellam, and we have Amin Satali, co-founder and chief RD of officer of Proven Med. As well, we have our, uh, our uh, ecosystem partner, Dr. Ramadan. So let's start with having a question to our uh, startups or our founders. I'll start uh, by uh, a general question. If you can introduce yourself and talk briefly about the startups uh, company you have. Let's start with Khawla, ladies first. Thank you, Khawla, very much for the kind introduction. And thank you for giving us as the Kellam this opportunity to, uh, to talk to uh, the, um, the community and the entrepreneurs listening. And hopefully they get um, something beneficial out of today's discussion. So my name is Khawla Hamad. I'm the founder uh, of Takellam. Takellam is an online counseling platform that connects um, individuals, organizations uh, with um, uh, qualified uh, mental health professionals uh, via a platform that is highly secured, convenient, um, uh, using several methods of communications, including uh, video, audio, and instant life messages. The, uh, the idea behind Tekellam is to make mental health uh, services more accessible, more affordable, and more convenient to, uh, to the users or to the community in general. So we do this uh, hand in hand with um, an awareness campaign that we work on to break the stigma that is associated with mental health. So um, trying to introduce positive um, um, messages, reinforce the positive outcomes that um, an individual will get out of seeking mental health support and break the misconceptions around mental health in general. Thank you, Khawla. Uh, to you, Amin. I mean, thank you, Khawla, for introducing us and for giving us this opportunity to uh, get or to interact with the community. Uh, my name is Amin Stali, uh, co-founder and chief R&D officer of Proven Med. Um, in Proven Med, we created the next wave of medical devices that help people uh, of determination and uh, um, people who suffer from uh, urinary incontinence, a problem that uh, uh, impact many people worldwide. We help them with devices to regain their confidence and to um, be active uh, in society. And uh, we do that through compassion innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Uh, moving to my second question. Um, how did you start your journey uh, and um, uh, what's challenging have been uh, through your journey as a healthcare provider? Uh, I will start with you, Khawla. Sure. So uh, I, we actually started prior to COVID and uh, realizing the, the challenges apart from starting a healthcare tech company, the idea of introducing subject as mental health, which is a sensitive topic in our communities. So trying to introduce such a topic in a way to make it more approachable, more acceptable by, by the community is a long way to get to the actual result or, or the outcome of what we're trying to achieve. So um, having, having said that, once you break the stigma or you break the misconception about, ab around it, you need to offer um, an easy solution. So a solution that would make someone, okay, I'm convinced now, let me give it a shot. 
I don't want to go through in-person uh, um, mental health support or therapy. I want something that is private for me, that is convenient, that I am comfortable in my own place without leaving, without uh, going out of my way to try something uh, in this domain. So giving them the option uh, and an easy accessible solution that is customizable and um, uh, convenient for them is, is the biggest uh, piece that's missing in this puzzle. So things have been progressing. Uh, luckily, uh, yes, the situation is very difficult for many businesses and for the uh, economy in general, but we were blessed. We're one of those that actually were benefiting from uh, the situation. So with the rise of um, uh, the stresses, with the rise of the lockdowns and uncertainty, people are uh, going through a lot of mental health distresses. And it's, it's, um, it's coming up as we are seeing it now, the next pandemic uh, or the aftermath of this pandemic is a mental health crisis. So we had to accelerate our, our, um, our efforts and try to come up with, a, with something as soon as possible as we saw the demand going highly, um, increasing in the, in the high uh, ends very, very fast. So um, like I said, we, we were blessed in this area, but again, um, along with the other initiatives that are um, government and specific and the global uh, community in general have shed a lot of light on mental health because of the pandemic. So our journey would have been more difficult before what we're going through now, but because of the importance of it and um, like a lot of initiatives have been coming up, a lot of, you know, um, uh, campaigns have been set up by the UAE government, a lot of helplines uh, acknowledging this issue have made, have, have paved the way for us to, uh, to deliver an easier um, service. Uh, yes, indeed, Khawla, I hear that a few companies who've been releasing their employees, actually they dedicated like the allowances for mental and to take care of their employees, especially the one who's uh, like losing their, their job. So I'm sure that you have a big market there. 100%, yes. Okay, now to you, Amin. Uh, if you can uh, talk a little bit about your journey, how you start uh, the, uh, your idea, and uh, what's your future plan? Yeah, uh, as Khawla said, you know, uh, all solutions and innovations comes up uh, from challenges. Like the challenge Khawla was, was talking about, uh, there are many challenges out there uh, which impact uh, the uh, health of people. And one of those challenges, um, I mean, many challenges, they are uh, visible. Others are not, are hidden. So the problem we were uh, tackling, it was, uh, it started with a story of uh, uh, my friend, uh, Muhammad. Uh, he was uh, suffering from uh, that problem, which we call uh, urinary incontinence and we call it as well as loss of bladder control. So it's a problem where people, they cannot control their bladder, it means they cannot control uh, 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 urination. Um, so uh, so when, he, uh, when we met, I, I met my friend and we tried to help him. We tried to get him some solution and uh, unfortunately there was no solution. And I, uh, um, uh, I joined uh, my other friend, Suhil, who is also a co-founder in GoogleMed. And we worked together and uh, we decided to make the solution for him, for our friend. And it started all from there. So uh, the moment we dig into the problem, we found that there are millions of people suffering from this, not only our friend Mohammed. And uh, the current um, alternatives available they were not designed to suit these people and to, to, to help them. For example, uh, these people, they, they, they use the adult diapers while there are certain people who are still productive, still in the 40s and the 50s. And uh, the moment they start using those adult diapers, it means, uh, you know, they are, you know, they have to stay home. They, they, they do nothing else. 
and, 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 and it's all, it all started from there. And we started our R and D. We we uh, we uh, we created a, a solution from the mind of a patient, a person who suffered from the problem. And then by the time uh, we strength, we strengthened that solution and came and it became a prototype. And from a prot prototype, it has been reached to a commercial product. And that product now helped many people like Muhammad. And uh, instead of using those adult diapers, now they started using our product, which is called Active Go. And uh, they are happy. So, uh, uh, so from there, um, the, uh, the startup started and the product started. Uh, okay, I mean, what about uh, this year and uh, the whole thing about the pandemic? How did it affect your uh, business? Yeah, uh, look, the pandemic uh, has impacted us uh, from logistics point of view because we deal with uh, Japan, we deal with China, with South Korea in terms of R&D production. And luckily, um, I was personally in Wuhan on 15th of January while the virus was there. And the decision to move there and to, I was there to supervise the production and I left from Dubai around 31st of December. And it was the, uh, you know, um, um, uh, the decision to move or not because uh, it's, the, it's the, the beginning of the year everybody is planning to celebrate but i was in that position to go or not to go but luckily i went you know i left and i spent almost 30 uh, sorry 20 days there in china and i secured a production that has luckily as well reached dubai before the closure of the uh, you know the, uh, the the ports and the airports. That was a kind of a timely, um, lucky decision we we made. And the moment uh, we came, the production. Of course, we kept working with our production with all our distributors. However, later on, we were not able to to mm. produce more because everything was closed. And as you know, um, entrepreneurs always find a way how to move ahead and how to move around. We cannot stop. When we face a problem, we need to we need to find an alternative. We cannot just wait. And at the time of the COVID, logistically, uh, we have been impacted, but uh, we have invested that time to to do more R and D in Dubai and to prepare for the next version, to prepare for the next product. And we have also um, engaged a lot with our customers and, and the users, with our employees. So in fact, we were we, we were actually having enough time uh, to to spend in in strengthening other areas that that don't rely on logistics. And then the moment um, airports and logistics, you know, um, uh, ports opened, we came back and we now I'm flying back to China in the next three weeks for the next mass production. So we, we can say that COVID has uh, taught us a lot in terms of productivity, in terms of uh, engagement with our customers, with our uh, employees. It has also given us an opportunity to deal with doctors. We have given, we discovered that our product can help not only patients, also help frontliners. And that was a big, uh, a big gain in, in COVID uh, uh, environment. We gave our uh, active go uh, devices to doctors in Italy and they used it in order to be very productive while you know helping the patient. So uh, uh, all in all, we can say uh, we uh, you know we benefited in a way or another from the environment. We changed the uh, chemistry of of working in crisis, uh, and this is uh, I think I think uh, all the startups have uh, witnessed this. They had to move around they have to find a way to be productive 
Yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, um, like uh, with our attraction with the startups, we, we uh, hear a lot of uh, them saying that the COVID period and pandemic period allow them to settle and then focus on uh, the impl how to implement and how to evolve uh, their business in, uh, and go in the uh, direction. Some of them, even they change their direction that they start off. And, uh, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, so my last question to you, Hawla. Seeing you as a female founder make us very proud as uh, a female. Uh, uh, and in our team, we, are, we have the majority uh, of a female. So uh, the feminism is always uh, high. So being a female and a founder, uh, how is it when it's come to managing people and creating a team? Um, thank you for those kind words. Honestly, um... Like we've been, I've been blessed by the uh, by the right uh, people around me, by the right support. And um, funny enough, uh, speaking of email, it was coincidence to be honest. But Takellan's team is an all-female team. Uh, for some reason, uh, we were having this conversation, my colleague and I today, actually, that why don't we have male, male um, uh, team members, but it just happened to be like that. And for me, honestly, it's not gender specific, it's the personality and the person, how um, they move forward and they get things done and uh, click in terms of uh, personality and there is chemistry between the team. Uh, that's the most uh, priority for us. So um, whoever brings in the right skill set, the right mindset and the right um, uh, attitude can add a lot of value in anything they're doing. So um, there is a lot of learning as, as a person for me. Um, obviously, I started not knowing what I'm doing. So it's starting a business from scratch, um, but there's so many elements and so many missing pieces that you need to have in place. Um, so it's literally learning as you go. And um, you, like, I'm sure uh, Amin has gone through the same with his experience. Like you end up doing everything yourself uh, from things to do with, um, like you start with the research yourself, you start with the, doing um, you know, the business planning, you start with even uh, PRO things to do yourself. So everything, uh, hiring, um, anything to do from A to Z, and then you do it. Once you start getting all the right support and, and the right place, things start to become easier. And I have learned so much about myself and about other people and about other areas, obviously, like I had no, idea that I could go into so much details into legal until I started doing it. <laughs> so you end up doing a lot of things and you learn so much about yourself. And honestly, we are so blessed living in the UAE is not, so women are always encouraged. You know that Khawla and you, you, you see it yourself. Women are always encouraged and they are supported fully. And Alhamdulillah, and we have this blessing um, that we can reach as far as we as we want and um, get things done. Um, so, Alhamdulillah, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been such a nice and fun journey, uh, and there's way so much still too much to go. Yani, it's still with with at the very early early uh, stages of our journey. The good thing, Khawla, that you started. When you, yes. Whenever you are, like, in, if you are in the phase where you just talk, I will do this and I will do that without doing anything, then you will remain <laughs> in the phase. But since you start, I'm sure that you will yeah. point and beyond that. Definitely. Well. Of course, I mean, we are not, uh, like, uh, seeing you as uh, less of uh, Hawla. We, you are equally, we are equally proud of you, especially with you, I mean, being one of, uh, uh, actually, the first winner of the Smartpreneur competition. So let me briefly, uh, I would like you to express your, uh, your uh, point of view in this field, like how important is it for startup to engage in such competitions? Yeah, thank you, uh, Khawla. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm with you for, uh, uh, in terms of uh, supporting women. And by the way, by the way, I always say that the women, they have higher chances to succeed than men. 
in especially in entrepreneurship. You know why? Because they have two skills which we don't have. One is the multitasking. So we struggle to multitask. And there is no man that can say that I can multitask. It's, it's not true. And the second is they, when they focus, they have a higher focus, especially when they run, they, they, they are, uh, you know, risk managed. Uh, they, they manage the risk, you know, they don't go like blindly in things. So the, these two skills, you find them in women more than men. And this is proven. And I can tell you that the startups I know, uh, uh, which have been, you know, founded by women, all of them are successful. All of them without, uh, you know, 100% are successful. So coming back to, uh, uh, to the, uh, um, if you can remind me, what was the question, the competition? The question yeah. was about yeah. uh, the startup, how, how important for them to engage in competitions. Yeah. Look, as example of our first winner in the smart winner competition. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question, Paula. It's a really, really a very important question because look, competition, pitch, these things are in the DNA of startups and entrepreneurs. It's all about competition. It's all about challenging and being challenged. If startups they don't go and they pitch and they compete and they get access to competitions they will be uh, like a kind of um, their their borders are not even touched so uh, having that spirit of competition you know draft and craft the the uh, the, the the vision and the, and the path for for uh, startups and for founders and every competition has its impact, its gains. And losing a competition, it is not a, 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 you know, a loss, it's a gain. Because participating in a competition, for example, like uh, smartpreneurs, where you, you are head in head with a really uh, special startups and founders from all over the world and from different sectors and with an esteemed uh, judges and uh, like uh, the, the entrepreneurs, uh, the smartpreneurs 5.0, it was really a tough one. The selection of those startups, it was done uh, like uh, uh, a very high level. You know, it has been uh, uh, for us, it was one format which is very special to us. We have participated and we won many competitions in South Korea. Uh, in, uh, in the UAE, in Tunisia, in Africa, in Europe, but the Smartpreneurs 5.0 was special to us. So uh, entrepreneurs, they have to be all the time seeking challenging competitions, participating, elevating their, their spirit, because the more they interact in these competitions, the more they build their grit and their visionary and their energy, because it has to be like this. I always say, even while doing our job, while hiring, while selling, while um, you know looking for solutions, we always work in the same mood, the mood of competition, the mood of pitching. When we hire someone, in fact, we don't hire him the, the, the you know the, the normal the in ordinary way. Actually, we pitch to him and we ask him to pitch himself. And then when there is that spark, that chemistry, that's where we hire him. We don't care about experience because the experience we will make it, you know, we get it. But it's about the chemistry. It's about the person if he can actually challenge himself, if he can challenge us. So, uh, uh, in a short notice, competition is always healthy for startups and founders. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I uh, couldn't agree more with you on this. Uh, now we reach the end of the question and day from me. And uh, again, we will come with a question from the audience. And now I would like to invite our ecosystem partner, uh, Dr. Ramadan Al-Blushi, the Chief Regulatory Officer from Dubai Healthcare City Authority. Um, welcome, and it's a pleasure to have you with us again. For the audience, I would like to remind us that this summer we run uh, uh, the first Dubai Tech Tour, uh, the, the, the virtual dedication for the founder from India and Dr. Ramadan and his team played an important role here. 
uh, Dr. Ramadan, if you can share with our audience, how can healthcare startup benefit from the policy regulation from Dubai Healthcare City Authority? The, the mic is yours. Shukran Khawla, thank you very much for the wonderful uh, uh, gathering today, actually. And I would like to thank uh, Khawla Hamad and uh, Amin for the interesting, uh, really, I was really interested in hearing all the details about the startup companies and, and how it's happening. Basically, before I start about the legislations, I think we need to differentiate between a startup company before COVID and a startup company during COVID. Uh, this is very crucial because to start up any company, there are basics at any time that you have a right team, a right leader, a right budget, and right uh, scope or, or objective for starting. But what, what was differing this time is that COVID was an unexpected event that made the uh, survival of leaders than managers. With all respect to managers and leaders, but here comes the role of a, a leader, uh, very obvious that he or she will have uh, a different thinking that how to survive the harsh, difficult situation globally. At the same time, the, there's a radical change in the system that will uh, uh, even uh, uh, make uh, compels you as an owner or leader of the project to change even the whole scope because it's no, more, no longer needed. And I think Amin was mentioning about the difficulties in the beginning about how to reach out and how to get the, the cargo and how to open the company and how to retain the flight. And, and uh, Khawla also was mentioning about starting the company, uh, direction was not clear and then having the right team. So basically the startup companies, yes, they face some regu difficult regulations or sometimes un uh, unclear legislations. When it comes to health, actually it was much more harder because uh, of many, many situations. One of them is the legal aspect. And uh, the second thing is the basically when you when you interpret a new device or new technique or even new uh, way to diagnose patients, here comes the legislations of even the telecommunications or for even allowing the pri patient privacy. Uh, is it safe to talk to a patient, to a doctor through world online? How to prescribe medication? Uh, what To what extent I can see the patient and consult him? And how do I make sure that I'm seeing the right one in the right place? Not forgetting that today with, with the globalization that you could see uh, a doctor from US and you are uh, back home at Dubai. And how do a, a regulator will make sure that that doctor who's in US is a licensed doctor and uh, that he's seeing the patients. So there's many, many aspects actually to talk about the startups and, and how to regulate them. Just before I forget, Khawla, whenever there's the time is short or there is coming to close, my, just remind me one minute before so I can close up the, the topic. You now, still have, Doctor, uh, more uh, five minutes. Hey, no problem. Now, I think the startup companies, what I noticed recently in healthcare, majority, uh, their thinking has changed because of the need of uh, virtual rather than the physical. And even I could notice that the culture of doctors and healthcare professionals changed dramatically that uh, before COVID, a doctor was not even thinking or accepting the idea to see a patient through online. Uh, yeah, although the telemedicine, for example, started in 80s or, or late 80s and 90s in Dubai, by the way, but none of the doctors and patients were accepting it. Today, um, all the healthcare professionals and businesses are looking forward for this uh, te technology. And then when you go to regulations, uh, there are many, many different aspects. What I advise here basically is you, you before you start the project and get really enthusiastic, you must know the, the rules and regulations of each country. Because yes, there is globalization, but once you enter each country separately, you'll find different legislations and rules which may or may not allow you. For example, in Dubai, because our UAE, we are the one of the uh, lucky country that our leaders allowed blockchain, they allowed AI, they allowed networking easier and even our telecommunication is the the infrastructure is is, is really uh, great and, and is fast this enabled us to start up and even uh, um, uh, accept more companies to start their business in, in, in UAE not forgetting one example is education when they school they, they closed the school suddenly all the school was shifted to to, to online uh, teaching and that was one big challenge that some countries even announced officially that they cannot do it because they have not enough infrastructure. So um, one of the aspects is always infrastructure, which we are lucky in a way to have it. Second one is that 
the regulations today has moved and shifted dramatically from normal regulation to innovative regulation uh, in a sense that uh, when we had the lockdown uh, during that lockdown the first week one of the first announcements by healthcare regulators was to enable telemedicine and to allow all those communication uh, not forgetting the role of the telecommunication when they allowed the video calling uh, system uh, enabled in the whole country so you can see that the when a country tries to uh, adjust themselves and adopt and adapt uh, fast it will help uh, all the startups, for example, to start their company faster and grow even bigger. And when we talk about this one, we talk about the benefits of the patients. During the lockdown in Healthcare City Authority, we had around 12,000 consultations for psychology and psychiatry services only in a few months. And this is a huge number to be done, consulted from home, because lots of people, they lost their job or they lost their uh, um, uh, income or they lost their friends or they lost their even some people they they had problems with their changing with their lifestyle so it was not an easy thing that suddenly i tell you tomorrow you are no more going to work no more doing exercise no more seeing your friends no more going to movies that is a drastic change in human behavior which he or she was never uh, expected to do yet uh, it, it happened in dubai and dubai specifically they could they could beat this one um, it was a group uh, work with all governmental entities in and outside Dubai, and, and I think the leadership allowed. So to, to, to summarize, the Healthcare City Authority, basically what, they, what we are doing currently, that we are studying all the aspects of businesses needed in, in, in Dubai and allowing uh, those countries or those practices to, to happen, uh, yet other countries are not allowing it. And uh, what we put the focus is very simple, patient safety and, of course, confidentiality. Once those tools are implemented in place, you can uh, do whatever you like with the regulations. You can allow such a business. And uh, here we are, we, we are getting lots of, of, of applicants, different, uh, honestly, we are getting lots of different uh, ideas nowadays in healthcare. And we are not even stopping those from flourishing. Uh, uh, and lots of, I was reading some questions, how to start a business. Is this allowed in UAE? Is it allowed in Dubai? I cannot answer all the questions today, but Yet I can see that you need to ask the right uh, authorities uh, for the right place. If you do it in a free zone, it's different. If you do it in, in mainland, it's different. If you do it in Abu Dhabi, it's different. Each city or each place, and even UAE, they have a, a certain goals and, and characteristics to allow uh, the business. And this variety, actually, this is the, the fruit of it that it enabled attraction of more business to, to, to uh, flow in, in the country. Uh, for a free zone, yes, we have different rules which enables uh, more investors uh, to work in, in different fields. Uh, for example, we uh, we are targeting uh, the global rather than the local ones for one reason, that the global expertise in medicine and not in high tech, only in medicine, like bring doctors and so on, will bring more uh, experience in the country. But high tech, we are open to any services, whether it's, it's, it's local or, or global, as long as it will serve. Uh, one of the things which we did recently was a live uh, booking system. Uh, as you know, that patients were suffering from taking an appointment with the doctor. You book, you book it online, they, kill, they call you back, and then you change the appointment, then you call back. It takes ages until you fix an appointment with the doctor. Nowadays, lots of companies came, and one of them was partnering with us, that they have a live appointment system. You can see the schedule of the doctor, lock your time, and you know for sure that tomorrow you're going this time, you're going to see the same doctor. So this, imagine how this helps the people. And with the telemedicine today, you don't need even to go. You just need to book that appointment, be present for 20, 30 minutes for consultation, and that's it. Uh, along with this one, we found lots of companies delivering medication to doorstep and enabling insurance system through the, the same platform. So imagine how we change the journey from uh, being all physical to non-physical and at the same time, putting the security and, and patient safety. So yes, the legislations are changing a lot. And the, the UE cabinet, if you notice, every two, three weeks, they're announcing different rules and regulations, how to ease up this uh, uh, situation and how to make sure that the startup companies specifically growing more and more uh, in the country. This is just a brief, and I, I hope that I answered the questions in, in, in different directions. Thank you, Dr. Ramadan. And you've been uh, perfectly on time. Thank you for that. And now uh, we will start with uh, our Q&A session. Please raise your hand or type your question in the inbox.
I can see a few of you raising the hand. So please, um, Nov, if you can let Omka Alexander unmute her, please. And Pomka, you can go ahead and introduce yourself and ask your question. Hey, it's been a pleasure to hear all of you. Thank you so much for it. So I, I have to understand, I am a startup from India and I assist a lot of companies into, into manufacturing and uh, into other tech startups to uh, grow their businesses in the UAE. Um, so I would like to understand what are the bodies that provide regulations for the same uh, post-COVID and pre-COVID? How has it changed in terms of regulations, in terms of need of regulation and in terms of regulations for working? Let's say not physically, but uh, like doctor said, if virtually you want to be there in the UAE, then how? what is the start point? Uh, Pumpkin, you are uh, asking about uh, starting a healthcare uh, uh, startup or working in general. Just to cut it short, let me answer both in very quick, I think, uh, Khawla. The, basically, the question maybe has three parts. Part number one is to how to license the medical device, a new medical device in the market. This is very easy. Basically, this is all done through Ministry of Health. They have a really specialized team, which you can uh, go to their website and send them the queries, and they will register those uh, machinery into the country. If it has already been registered, then it's going to be easier to, to ship them. Second question is basically, if you do remotely, how, how, can, how can I see the patients? Like I'm a doctor in India, I want to see your patients in Dubai. What we advise basically is that you need to tie up with any partner, uh, medical uh, partner in, in UAE, and they can introduce you to their own network. Why? To make sure that you are eligible doctor, you are from highly reputed university or hospital. So you can tie up with any of the clinics or hospitals in the country so you can see them. Now, uh, to practice in Dubai itself is, is much more easier because you are physically in Dubai and you will be licensed and then you can practice the telemedicine at any of the facilities or even individually if you have the license. Thank you, doctor. Uh, now we have a question from Malik. Uh, if you can unmute him, please. Malik, you can start by introducing yourself and, answer, uh, and asking your question. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much for uh, this nice gathering and the insightful, talk, insightful talks uh, by the speakers. Uh, my question is uh, to Dr. Rashid, if you please. Uh, Dr. Rashid, is there a license in um, Dubai Healthcare City uh, for healthcare tech or as, bus as business activity? I think he meant Dr. Ramadan. Uh, uh, I'm yes, sorry, Dr. Uh, Ramadan. Uh, no Sorry, problem. Uh, Malik, uh, basically, yes, we do have a variety of different, uh, and, um, as you see, business entities or uh, names. Uh, not necessarily it is specifically the same name, but it goes, it falls under categories of, of healthcare. Like we have consultancy, we have, we have uh, uh, distribution, we have even actual uh, clinics. So yes, uh, we do have different activities. Uh, uh, when the names is too specific, what we do, to, to enable the startup, we put them under a group of, of, of uh, consultancy or companies which will have the same scope and then you can start up the company. And you are welcome, of course, to, to mail us and for more further details. Good, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malik. Um, Nov, if you can unmute uh, Kaswin Suresh. Keswin, you can uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, ask your question. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, I'm a healthcare professional working in the industry, been in Dubai for the last two years. Uh, have been engaging with a couple of my peers in the industry to 
open up a health health tech startup in the region. So my question would go both uh, to the regulators uh, as well as the panelists who are speaking today in this session. My question is uh, primarily that, uh, how did you set up your business here? You had to work with a consultant for setting up the business. And if so, how was the process? Uh, the second part of the question is, uh, we often require DHA approval in terms of uh, running a health tech business or a healthcare business uh, in this country or uh, specifically in the Emirate of Dubai. So how tedious is the process with regards to the inspection and validation giving, uh, being rela released by the Dubai Healthcare Authority? And last of all, what I've noticed is that there are a lot of telehealth operators in the country. And definitely when you are uh, in building or incorporating video and audio API platform into your applications or into your services, you also need to work with the telecom regulations authority of this country or the TRA to get in these approvals. How are these approvals usually facilitated? What are the ideal timelines? And uh, does the COVID-19 pandemic and people being required to work from home uh, can positively or negatively impact this whole process? Can I ask Camille to answer the first uh, part of the question? Now, uh, thank you, Khawla. How to set up, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, might, you might go for consultants or you might do it yourself. You know, we are in a, in a very, uh, you know, we are, we are in a smart city in Dubai. You can access a, every service online. For example, setting up license, you can go to uh, Healthcare City, you can go, for example, to Dubai Science Park, which is a free zone for, uh, for the uh, uh, medical devices, for example, for high tech, the tech, medical tech. Um, uh, now, uh, um, you can do it yourself or through a consultant. And uh, uh, I have never faced any uh, tedious, uh, let's say, process. It's very simple and easy. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, in terms of uh, uh, regulations uh, as well, um, uh, we, we dealt with, uh, with the, uh, the Ministry of Health and it was very, very uh, easy and very, it's just a form, we filled up the form and the, there's a committee. So things are very, uh, very easy. You don't even need to move and, uh, you know, and meet them, or everything online almost. Thank you, Amin. For the second part of the question, I believe uh, you will find all the answers in the guide that we, we will uh, provide you with. But uh, in case, Dr. Ramadan, if you want to add anything in this part, uh, you can go ahead. Well, just simply, I think also, I mean, I already answered the question that basically, if you have any questions for uh, regulations, uh, we are happy to help and get details. The second thing is that uh, if you're going to practice in Dubai, yes, you're going to go to the rules of DHA or uh, Healthcare City. If you're going to work in Abu Dhabi, you have to follow the rules. There is nothing to worry about inspection or something. Uh, these, uh, yes, these are new systems, but yet there are lots of measures how to take care of them. Uh, there is lots of uh, governmental bodies looking after these. And uh, TRA regulations, uh, to be honest, they were very lenient and they were very, very supportive of such a change. So uh, if there is uh, something, uh, and lastly, what you said that would this ha harm the business uh, entity today with, the, with having high tech, would it harm the existing ones? So this is very simple. It's a competition and innovation uh, market. You need to be really awake and, and try to reach up to your customers. And uh, this is the only way it works with you. If you stay still, say my business is fine, I will not evolve, I will not do changes. Of course, it will fade away by time it will die. So basically, you need to stay tuned and always be innovative enough to, to, to compete in, in this market uh, specifically. Um, Misha, Misha, you can go ahead and uh, ask your question. Misha Cochin. Yeah, hello, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you introduce yourself uh, and ask your question? Yeah, sure. First of all, many thanks for this valuable meeting. Um, very interesting. Uh, my name is Misha. I work for business intelligence and data analytics software startup with a focus uh, on healthcare. And we are exploring opportunities to approach the buy market. So can you please recommend um, any health tech um, acceleration program or challenges or competitions for startups um, to start and to expose its solution, please. Thank you. 
Misha, if you can please uh, uh, email us in Dubai Startup Hub at Dubai Chamber with this inquiry, and we will uh, be more than happy to uh, provide you with uh, with, uh, with this kind of information. Uh, Hawla, also let him let him contact me. I, I'm going to share with him multiple programs in the UAE. Uh, sure, we will provide him with your contact details. Yes. Uh, Karim Ghaffari, if you have any question. I will ask Ali Al Khawaja. Ali Al Khawaja, if you would like to introduce yourself and ask your question. Ali, are you with us? Yep. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, introduce yourself and ask your question, please. Um, hi. My my question is again regarding to the health tech space. Um, given you know the last six odd months that we've been dealing with COVID, there's a lot of new startups. And I think, again, the, the big issue is, is with, with regulations and regulatory approvals. Uh, you know, we have uh, a lot of apps that are US-based or Europe-based that are accessible by users in the UAE um, without any UAE regulations to oversee them. So if we want to start in a similar space, would you advise that we channel it through the UAE and, you know, and Dubai or whichever entity you recommend and go through the regulatory procedures, or do you think it would be easier to set up in Europe or the US and uh, you know, essentially work with regulatory uh, frameworks that are already available in those countries? I believe Dr. Ramadan, you can answer this question. Thank you, Ali, for the question. Basically, uh, it's your own business how to approach. Uh, what I advise, if you want to have a trusted application or website, it's always advisable to go through the government because once you have the approval from the government entity, it will create a trust between you and the client. Yet, if you think your business is flourishing more, and for example, let's say, as you said, in US, and you, you're going to start up there and grow, and then you bring the solution to the country, it's also doable. But the only thing is basically what is your target audience and how you're going to focus them. Uh, I will link this one to to Mr. Amin. Uh, Mr. Amin started with the, with a very focused uh, uh, service for uh, urological patients because they suffer from from few things. Now this service is new, is not available in Dubai, and is needed. So once you go and introduce the service to the government, they will definitely like it and they will go ahead with it. But once you, uh, if you're gonna do imitate the same uh, service available in the whole country and you say, listen, I'm, I'm an extra uh, service to the same, to that one only cheaper. It's going to be uh, definitely, or, or even um, not only cheaper, maybe I have a better platform, whatever. The only, lots of interest in it. So it depends on you how you see it, and both of them are doable and both of them are right. If you allow me to uh, just comment on this as well, on uh, this question, Paula. Yes, please, I mean. Yeah, uh, adding to uh, Dr. Ramadan. Um, now, Dubai, um, it's no more um, a, a place to serve Dubai in the UAE. Now, now it's, a, it's a truly, it's a hub. If you guys, if the entrepreneurs and startups who have a service or a product that attracts, that they're, 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 it's destinated to the world, um, Dubai is the best place to, to, to structure it and to expand it. Because... You have to think about expansion. Don't only think about one local market. You know, local market you can you can create and you can multiply in other markets. But in Dubai, you will have the platform that make your product exposed to 180 nationalities, and then you can expand from Dubai to the Middle East and to the world. The resources are there. The regulation helps you to do there that. And the government supports that. I give you an example for proving that. We started in 2017, and today we are selling to 12 international markets from Dubai. And now we're expanding to Europe from Dubai, expanding to North America from Dubai. So the structure helps us to move quickly. The infrastructure helps us. Hiring the best talents is easy for us. Um, everything can be done quickly. 
and that helps you know the momentum of startup so uh, for those smart for those uh, startups and uh, entrepreneurs who are looking to be global dubai is their platform uh, thank you, Amin. Uh, Khawla, I have a question from Malik al Nahar. He's asking about um, you being saying that a healthcare tech uh, needs a license in Dubai or business activity. Um, can you answer this question? Sure. So there's two different things, right? So when we talk about tech or healthcare uh, tech startup, there's the healthcare aspect and there's the tech aspect. You need to differentiate where you fall. You need to find out, are you a healthcare provider or are you a technology provider that enables healthcare? So we fall in the technology um, aspect. So that means we are a tech startup, but we are part of the healthcare ecosystem, enabling healthcare activities, working hand in hand uh, with the um, uh, healthcare authorities and uh, trying to enable the ecosystem that's in place. So it's a tech license that we have and uh, there are um, now many um, uh, entities, government entities in Dubai and Abu Dhabi where they support uh, tech startups uh, that address certain challenges in the healthcare industry. Uh, also, Ali uh, Khawaja, he asked uh, you, Khawla, uh, from uh, whom they can take the approval on, on, uh, on uh, online uh, therapy services, like the one you provide? So again, we're not the actual provider. So we work very closely with the uh, healthcare authorities in Abu Dhabi and Dubai to ensure that we have certain uh, processes that are uh, applicable uh, to those uh, providers who are on our platform to be able to conduct uh, those services. So we have our internal vetting process that has been uh, co-created with those um, entities. And um, we need to, again, follow the rules and the regulations by all uh, you know, the, the different bodies and the ministry and even the um, uh, data um, aspect of it to cover the patient's uh, privacy and all of that. So there are many different um, entities that are involved in this um, whole uh, spectrum. But again, it's not, we don't offer the, uh, the therapy ourselves. We are enablers uh, in terms of a technology, but we still have to get the right approvals from um, the, uh, the healthcare authorities in the country. Uh, thank you, Khawla. The last question I would like to uh, know um, if you can unmute Hadi Al Kitbi, and we will have the last question for the, today. Hadi? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. you can Hi, thank you for, thanks, thanks, to, thank you for this opportunity. Um, well, uh, I've seen a couple of the platforms that helps and connect the uh, health sector or like uh, private clinics to the users uh, who is looking for the best okay. services. Uh, uh, but I have noticed that there is an issue with the booking system. So um, um, it works like if somebody books uh, book an appointment with the specific clinic. Um, uh, it works like the booking uh, request goes to the app management and then the app management contact with the clinics and then they go back to the user uh, who booked the appointment. And so, so there is a gap with the booking system here. Why is that issue and how to solve it? And the second question is connected to this one also. Uh, there's some, some studies that says um, people prefer to call and book an appointment by themselves. And some studies says people prefer to book online and pay online for the services. So what, what guys do you think about that? Paula, did you face any kind of uh, problem or do you provide uh, online uh, services? When yeah, was... well, part of the whole uh, experience being virtual is having everything in a one-stop solution. So having uh, the scheduling or the booking system within the same platform is, is very crucial 
because you want to give right away a solution and uh, a convenient um, way to 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 book uh, an appointment so you start with that definitely and we honestly have not faced issues in that uh, in that area um, you have many solutions that are available that you can use um, you can just do your research and try to find what suits your business the most um, and yeah and then the second question he had was um, if you can remind me, Khawla. Uh, I can't Sorry, hear I you. Uh, he asked about the booking system and how uh, we uh, can overcome it and if uh, there is any solution uh, that's come with it as a provider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's you giving people the choice, right? So rather than going through a, a person on the phone and having to book and like Dr. Ramadan was saying, it's inconvenient. So for me, it's much more easier to just book it myself and have control of my own scheduling. So giving this uh, power to to the user is very very important I believe and it works well in this type of uh, situations. Uh, maybe, thank you. Paula, maybe I would just uh, put an add in uh, information for Hadi. I think Hadi uh, was mentioning exactly what was happening in the days before. But basically, the solution is the platform itself, whether it gets control to the patient or the operator. Now. Uh, what happened recently is that uh, it, it, some of the companies now providing the, what's called the real-time data or the real-time uh, um, uh, booking. So this is now available. But how does it work is basically that company will tie up with all the hospitals, clinics, let's say in Dubai. And what they do, they take their scheduling appointments with the doctors and the specialties and they plug it into the program. So basically, and they will be bound by this company that to provide accurate information, 100%. So the patient, when he logs in, he doesn't need to contact any hospital. He will just go Google through that uh, uh, application, the doctor he needs, and it will give him a specific timing, which is a real-time data. So if I book, for example, tomorrow 10 a.m. with a doctor and put my information and payment, if a patient comes after me, this time will be slot gone. So basically, this is the way it works today. It's similar to booking a movie at the cinema. So you book the seat, seat is gone. Now, so his second question was basically about the payment, which is better that I pay online, I pay cash, or the, I pay the operator. This is all related to the same platform. If the platform will allow you to do the payment, uh, let's say online, done. If it tells you, you know, you will pay it um, whenever you reach the clinic, it's done. Some of the platforms, basically, even they don't take the payment, they book it through your national ID because they want this information. It's, it's going to be genuine. I will not put a national ID of, my, of other ones unless I am sure that this patient will go. So there's lots of solutions available, but are there any more companies in the country to provide this real-time data? No, it's still uh, maturing. Maybe I think to my knowledge, there's only two to three uh, uh, companies. The only solutions now available is hospitals individual. So if, if you go to hospital A, they might have this application which allows them only for their own hospital. But for the whole country, there are two to three startup companies who started here and flourished, and they are still available to do this one. But yet, it depends on if the health authorities will provide them the data to, to tie up with their hospitals. I'm done, Khabla. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we reach uh, the end of our session today. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramadan. Thank you, Khawla. Thank you, Amin, for joining us today. And uh, I would like to pass the mic now to Nof at Mimi. Uh, thank you, Khawla. Uh, on behalf of Dubai Startup Hub, I would like to thank our speakers, Khawla and Amin and Dr. Ramadan for being here with us today. And uh, thank you for the audience for attending the session. Uh, please be aware that we will be sharing with you after the, the session a short survey where you can mention with who you want to you want us to connect you with from the uh, panelists aside with the sector guide which which Khawla has already mentioned earlier. So um, have a great day, everyone. And don't forget to sign up for the next session if you are interested in delivery and logistic and transportation.
No, is there just uh, 20 seconds to add something if possible? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's just a quick message to uh, a quick message to entrepreneurs and uh, people who want to start uh, their their startups in, in, in Dubai, in UAE in general. I, I give I give them um, this is actually the right time and the right place to start your your, your startup and don't get scared and don't uh, you know get discouraged. If you have an idea, especially in the healthcare. You can do it. You can join the other entrepreneurs, ask for help, join the programs, and just make it. You have all the success tools to make it in Dubai. And specifically, you see now the change that happens in Dubai quickly. You know, the, the way things managed in COVID very quickly. Now, Dubai government and the UAE is dealing like startup. Things are changing very fast. And this is the place where you can start your, your idea. And from the healthcare point of view, I just give another advice for people. Don't get only stuck on virtual stuff. There are a lot of physical stuff, a lot of medical devices needed. The entire business in medical devices, it's $20 billion value in the Middle East. All is exported from the outside. And there is a chance for this to actually multiply. So every entrepreneur has an idea, just seek help and make it. Don't get scared. Go ahead and you will make it and you get the support uh, and wish you all the best. Thank you. I mean, thank you for the advice. And uh, thanks again, everyone. And uh, have a nice uh, day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.